two Friday night. Jennifer's with us. Hey, Jennifer. Give it another minute. We'll give everybody a chance to hop on here. Jennifer's here. Ashley's here. Hi, friends. Hi, Edward. Edward. Hello. Actually, while everybody's popping on, do you want to walk down with me and I... My phone? Yeah. Big lesson here, guys. In a place like this, you never go by yourself. Ed will keep you company until he yeah, yeah, gets back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to stay here to make sure that uh, the equipments are safe. This is a, the, since the last 30 minutes since we've been online. Uh, we came back. We appreciate everybody coming back. Thank you so much. Um, this section, uh, we're going to go ahead and do uh, some actual investigating this room for a little while. You probably see Mike Lee walking down there. Uh, they're getting a feel for everything. The atmosphere has totally changed since the light goes on. The light has gone down. Uh, yes, ma'am. How can you see us? With my eyes, it looked good. Absolutely. Hey, Jason, thank you so much for checking this out. Please share. Now, what you're seeing down there at the bottom is actually, there is my, I'm not sure if he's having a seizure. What we're going to do now, we're just going to, what we said earlier, we're just going to sit and listen. Sometimes it's best just to be quiet. Yes. Um, you guys, the main reason we were doing all the goofiness is we wanted to make sure that uh, you guys could actually see down that hallway because sometimes even though we're in the room trying to get something to happen, things will happen outside the area. So you're going to be our eyes down that hallway. And I will pan our camera from time to time so you can see within the room itself. But for the most part, you can, you're getting a lot more coverage right now. Guys, make sure you're liking and sharing this video, please. Ed hasn't already covered all that. Oh uh, yeah, I do. That's my regular spill. See what we're hearing now. I don't know if you can pick it up on audio. Uh, there is a restaurant next door, so we're hearing a little bit of that. You can hear a little bit of road traffic from here. We're not too close to anything major, but you can hear doors shut outside, uh, and that's important on an investigation. Is too. Um, Hello, Timothy. Thank you for joining us. This is a really cool building. I'm going to try to keep up with the comments the best that I can. I have noticed that they don't always show all the comments. Right. So if I don't say something about your comment, do it again in case Facebook decided not to show it for whatever reason. Cause I wanted to check something here as I walked up. So, guys, you will notice that if I approach the camera, you're going to see my, what is that called, shadow Your big first. Head. And then you see me because we've got a flashlight up here on the wall trained that way to make it easier for you guys to see. Now, if a shadow comes across that wall and one of us hasn't claimed it, <laughs> then there's something, something else entirely. So, 
Let's go ahead and make that promise if we get up and we uh, do put a shadow that we do call that that is us. Oh, sure. And I'm going to slowly try to pan the room the best I can on this rig just so you can kind of see the room that we're in. I don't even know. It's dark over there. There's a couple of windows. Um, that's probably the best that you can see of, of what the room is. Here I am. Um, yeah, shine over there so we can they can see oh, yeah. actually what's that way. Okay, so that's what's behind Mike. Here, I'll stand up. And then... Where are you painting? Uh, well, let me sh start over here by the wall. If you see that light, that's Ed. He's in the floor against the wall. Right there. And then I'm going to pan around. I can't see the screen, so you'll have to, to help. Hey, you got Mike now. Okay. And there's Mike. There's the hallway. There's this side of the room. There's some file cabinets on either side. Yeah. And then, there we go. And then here's the other wall. That's really crazy. Oh, there I am. Sorry, there's my big fat That's face. That's like, there's Leah. <laughs> I was like, I Leah's not showing up on I know, camera. I didn't see myself. <laughs> the comments are in the way. <laughs> it's like, oh no. And if you see that really uh, shiny glow on our faces, it's sweat. <laughs> it is, it is warm, okay. So I will pan from time to time, but. So we're now we're just gonna. You probably heard that pickup in the background just. Yeah. Burn twelve gallons of gas. <laughs> right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna approach this just like we just set everything up. Uh, one thing like Mike was saying about uh, if you see it, do a shadow, you see a shadow, you make a noise, you call, just call yourself out, hey, Ed, that was me, that was Ed. Um, what that does is it, that'll tag your audio. That way you can, when you listen to your audio, you'll debunk that. So we'll get Mike to. Yeah, I'm going to step into camera shot here for just a second. This is just a standard little digital audio recorder. It's hard to see what I'm doing here in the dark. Uh, turn it on. And what I'm going to do here in just a second, I'm going to go back over here and sit down. I'm going to press record. Now, whenever you uh, are starting to record with your audio, you want to make sure that you tag it. Uh, time, date, um, location, anybody that's in the room with you during your session, you want to make sure that they speak their name. So you hear what their voice sounds like. So when you go back listening, you've got an audio tag of what everybody sounds like. So I am setting up to record now. Give me just a second. All right, we are recording. It is 9.07 on August 16th. We are at an undisclosed historical location. Present are Mike. Leah. Ed. I'm going to place the audio recorder in the middle of the floor. That's me dropping my light. And as you heard Ed just then, now that we've got the camera rolling, anytime that we make a noise that could be potentially mistaken as something uh, otherworldly, you want to make sure that you call it out. Uh, you want to try to not whisper during a session like this because you start whispering and if say one of the three of us ends up not being the one to listen to this audio which it will be but someone may mistake it as a potential EVP so if you do happen to whisper it's okay just make sure you call it out but you want to try not to do that so Maggie has a question okay. um, she, she says want to know if we discuss what um, the owners of the occupants um what they have made experience or some activity. So um, what we do, let me, let me explain this, the way we do this. 
Um, give give us a thumbs up or someone tell me you can hear me because if not I end up yelling and that's fine <laughs> but uh, the way this works is we're, we're called by a client they either call our number or Facebook us or uh, through uh, past clients their integrity and our reputation thanks for the thumbs up and uh, what they do is they come in uh, we meet with them I, I, I interview the client document that on paper then Mike and Leah walk around based on Leah's uh, impressions of things Mike documents that then Mike and I sit down separately look at same things kind of gives us a little road map of what direction or maybe some warning signs of things that we need to look at uh, please share our video we want to get some folks get this information out there yeah because now I'd Okay, mine just says connection available now. Anybody got me live? Uh, no, I, I, no, but it's not said nothing to me yet. If somebody can I see, see you. somebody sees or hears me, please comment. I am seeing thumbs up and hearts, but up. please comment. Yay, All right, Jennifer, thank you. <laughs> and that that's the thing. If if I'm telling you, it's intermittent. So we may have some interruption, but just please hold tight with us. I mean, it's unfortunately we don't have Wi-Fi here to <laughs> to Data. stay connected to, so we're relying on Data. <laughs> yeah, cell service. So like I was saying before we got interrupted there, um, we've already done our research on this location. Um, we've talked to some of the. Uh, some of the uh, thank you Tom the business occupants here we do have some stories um, can't really share them right now because whenever we go into an investigation uh, Miss Leah uh, wants to go in cold with no information and Leah do you want to kind of give them a breakdown of why well I want to stay free from power of suggestion uh, I have a gifting of discernment so if I know anything, anything about a location, then there's always that suggestive part of it that can influence what I pick up. But if I go in completely cold, then I know that what I'm experiencing, what I'm picking up, um, is it is what it is. It's not because I've heard something. Right. <laughs> Or I know something about, <clears throat> excuse me, the history. Um, it's I I know it's um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I know it's legit. Okay, it, it's it's, it's kind of a confirmation for me. So um, I prefer to not know anything. And during this first uh, investigation, since we're investigating it for the first time tonight. Uh, also join us tomorrow night we'll be doing we'll be doing uh, some more investigation here tomorrow night yeah, this but is a, this is a two-night investigation guys it's the first time we've got to do something like that in a while what will happen though is once we have investigated then Mike and Ed can uh, get back on here and let you know about the place the experiences or I'm even open to uh, if I share the ex something that I feel like is going on or whatever, and if it does the history or whatever or experiences that the owner has been, mm -hmm. if it confirms that, then that's fine. But anything that I haven't said or whatever, I, I would like for that to remain secret for now. And of course, we'll share any experiences that we've already had or have had. One th reason why we've got y'all pointed down that particular hallway is we've heard movement, knocking, heavy boot steps. Uh, not just on this particular visit, when we first came through here during the daytime uh, to initially do the scope out of this place. I'm walking towards the camera in case you see my shadow. But uh, we did hear some sounds going down through there, so that's uh, one thing that we have picked up on. Okay, so let's answer Okay. Some questions, and then we'll get started. Jimmy, Jimmy's ready for some action. All right. <laughs> uh, so, a question on our previous video. 
Um, well, we appreciate that, Jennifer. Jennifer says she liked our videos. She loved watching our videos, and that's great. We appreciate that. But she had a question. Sure. And uh, I'll leave this up to Mike. So the question Jennifer asked on the pre our first live video was, why is activity more active at night? Or why is there more activity at night? Yeah. Well, uh, it's, it's hard for me to answer that question right off the bat because if, it, if, if a location has activity at all, uh, it doesn't matter what time of day it's going to be. Now, once you get into the dark, the dark and the nighttime, you got to understand that the dark, you know, I hate to sound like I'm talking about Star Wars, but the dark side is where they come from. It's, you know, um, <clears throat> talk for some reason tonight but um that satan and his followers you know they prefer the darkness i mean it's in the bible talking about uh, creatures in dark places and stuff like that so we're on their turf um there are different belief systems uh, that believe that at night the veil uh between the uh the living and the dead the living and the supernatural uh becomes thinner uh, i'm not Hundred percent. I'm not sold on that. Um, I do believe that it is a mockery of sorts because if you ever hear people talk about the demonic witching hour, which is 3 a.m., the closer you get to 3 a.m., uh, the more that your activity picks up. Um, according to biblical history, Christ died on the cross at 3 p.m. So 3 a.m. is the mockery of Christ's death. So the closer that you get to that time frame is whenever the, the demonic and the dark forces start to gain power. Um, well, just that, think about your own self. I mean, how you, how are you able to be more mischievous and and do things right. that you want to do? Um, you do it better under at the cover of night. I mean, yes, crimes can happen during the day, just like paranormal activity can happen during the day, but they happen more often in the cover of night. So they're not exposed. Because one thing about it, especially along the lines of the demonic, if they are exposed, then there's that potential, especially when people like us come into a place that they are going to be uh, bound and sent back to where they came from. And they don't want that. They want to stay here, wreak havoc on on the people that are here, they want to make them miserable. They they are to kill and destroy. Um, so when they're exposed, <laughs> then they don't have that opportunity anymore. So, well, very good question. That's a great question, Jennifer. And I think it, um, that they might be just a very simple answer to that too. And what Michael Lee has said is very possible, and that's part of the debunking process. But most folks work nine to five, so at night you're tired. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, you're exhausted, and especially at night, houses make a lot of noise during the daytime, but we're just too busy. So it could be a combination of everything. Absolutely. Uh, you're going to notice it more when you're not. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Just if you could, Jimmy Hall, tell me where I'm, if I'm in the right spot. Um, Yeah, definitely, Jimmy. If you got a screenshot, send it to us. Um, if you hear anything, uh, tag it or just tell us that you hear something. <laughs> but absolutely. What's he picking up on? He's saying he's saying. Uh, um, he's actually saying. It's across the way. He says. Yeah, so. The door down the hall. What's he doing? At the very far end. Now, our shadows may be casting right now, so if you see that, keep that in mind. So we are, as long as we're an eyeball shot of each other, we're safe. You're talking about the door at the very end. Jay? Can you mess us, message send the uh, the screenshot in Messenger and I'll look at it. Oh, Jennifer awesome. saw it too. Awesome. Yeah. 
Yep. He said yes upstairs. It's white and misty. It's a figure. Yeah, I'm seeing that too. Thanks, Jimmy. Appreciate that. Ed's walking down there now, so. Here, I'll step out of the right here. shot. Is that it, Jimmy? Where Ed is standing? Or was standing. Leah, where are you at in relation to this shot? I imagine I'm um, oh, over here. Of, yeah, the top of your head keeps going into shot. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jimmy said yes. So yeah, it was that door, the door at the far end of the hall where you were standing in front of. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So what it was is. Um, it could actually be activity. This is Ed walking over the recorder. I'd be interested in seeing the screenshot for sure. See, I know that's dark. Well, see, I think what we actually, I actually think that's probably the issue right there, the reflection, because there, that is a varnished door. Oh, I see what you mean now. Okay, now it's gone, okay. Um, Yeah, I think that's probably just a, but that's a, that's a good eyes, Jimmy. Jennifer, Excellent. thank you. Um, I mean, if anything else happens back there, I mean, we don't want to discount it. So just send us that screenshot, call out anything else you may see. Okay. On the other side of the door on the storage. Yeah, still see stuff or whatever let us know I'm not gonna look at the comments anymore um, so uh, Ed and uh, well Ed <laughs> we'll keep up with those I'm going to my focus is divided yeah, Leah's not gonna be able to focus on the, the, the location at hand if she has to keep following the comments uh, Ed's got his phone in hand I will periodically walk over and take a look at the camera uh, that's the only way that I can see comments right now but what we're going to do is we're going to kind of run silent for a little while. This is where we just kind of take in the atmosphere. And it's just like Ed had said just a second ago. If, you know, you're too busy doing other things and dilly-dallying about, you know, you might miss something. So we like to just kind of soak in the presence for a minute and see what's going on.
switching around. Hey guys, time for, for a little bit of interaction here. We do have an EVP uh, recorder running. As you guys saw at the beginning of the video, we did start running audio. Uh, if anybody has any questions or anything they feel like they'd like to ask, uh, just post them in the chat and we will uh, we'll ask them for you. I just saw a light go yeah, out down there. The light on the right is flickering. Okay. Jimmy has a question, Ron. Huh? All right. We are up on the third Our, floor of this particular building. Where we're sitting at, uh, we're close to the far wall. Mr. Hitchcock says left of the door in the background. Inside the door or outside the door? Isn't that where the light went out? Yeah. Now that light does have a short down there. It has flickered a couple of times since we've been here. Even before uh, when we first visited. lead with your traditional first question during an EVP session. Is there anybody here that wants to communicate with us tonight? As Leah sits on the other side and shakes her head at me. We've heard you're knocking and moving about. Is there anything you want to try to communicate to us? my chair again. Jimmy says he keeps seeing a white mist down there.
everybody keep your vantage point on the hallway. Leah said she feels drawn to something down there, so she's going to check it out. Ed, it's just right outside the door, and I'm in here. can hear me. So Jennifer, Jimmy, looks like y'all were right. Um, that's me. I'm sitting down. So what happened was, as you can tell right now, Mike and Leah are down there investigating exactly what y'all were looking at. And um, Leah had something in her pocket that was physically pulled out of her pocket and it hit her foot. coming in here he's I think he's experiencing what I just experienced when I was out there what was that that's or is that outside that's outside that's the motorcycle what going did you get it? it sounded like a growl but it was a well, I heard what sounded like a <laughs> back there like a sigh uh, I couldn't tell if it was an inhale or an exhale but it was a breath Good eyes, Jimmy. Good eyes. You be, you and Jennifer would be great at evidence review. So, based it's on super heavy down that end. That's why when I stopped, um, I got the. Uh, well, I talked to you about when you get the ringing in the ear sensation. Everything goes silent, and then you get the ringing in the ears. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't get the ringing in the ears, but everything just goes silent. And then that's when 
the thing in my back pocket was pulled out and then I mean hit my the back of my heel yeah. pretty heavy I agree with you Jimmy um, we're gonna go offline here a little bit Mike's gonna set something I'll have this set up in just a few seconds based okay. on what Jimmy and Jennifer are picking up out there I'm fixing to set up our SLS camera and point it down that hallway yep Yeah, so Mike's going to set up our night vision camera going down that hallway. Um, it does have a little boom mic on it, so we'll be able to do pick up some audio there. Uh, camera yet. Huh? This is the Connect camera. Oh, the Connect camera. Okay, so this is an interesting experiment. Uh, we've tested this a few times. We want to see what happens. For any of you that have watched like Ghost Adventures or Involving this, uh, what this is is it is a Connect camera from the Xbox. My cord's tangled here, so bear with me, guys. Um, the Connect camera, the way it works, is it shoots up like a laser grid, an infrared laser grid, and whenever someone is using it to play a game, they break that laser grid, and it maps them into the software, which then in turn their movements are then mapped into the game and cast that way. So the way this software works is that I've turned the camera on and point it in a certain direction. Now, if you notice one of us walking to the camera, it will cast a stick figure over us showing that we're there. But there are paranormal investigators that use this and they will pick up stick figures when there shouldn't be anybody there. So that is the theory behind this. Thank you, Leah. We want to make sure you can hear us. Might setting up that experiment. Uh, we do use some equipment, and it's what we call the bare minimum equipment. Uh, just a couple of cameras, some audio, flashlights, so we don't fall. Uh, <laughs> we're not really into the big flashy gadgets. It kind of sets you up for um, confirmation bias. And if you don't know what confirmation bias is, it's basically one of those deals. If you look for something hard enough, you find it. The idea, you look at a cloud, it looks like a bunny rabbit. Well, it's not a bunny rabbit. It just looks like a bunny rabbit. So if you look for something and you're not careful and you don't have to do the self-evaluation, you can really set you up and get yourself real stirred up in the paranoia. Uh, if you have any questions or ideas or uh, about what we're doing or any suggestions, absolutely just ask us. What we're doing is we're just trying to, uh, we want to make sure what's going on over there is uh, activity. Uh, was it just a one-off deal? Uh, we want to make sure it's not a reflection. I'm, sit I'm just sitting here looking at it right now, and I can see some light being blocked out in one of the windows down there. Um, yeah, might Set that up. Because unfortunately the connect requires a, a power source as well, so I'm only kind of well, as far your, as I can go. I'm sorry, Matt. To answer your question, Jamie, you definitely need to reach out to us and get in contact with us. Uh, I'm not sure from where you're from. Mike's setting up that equipment now. Uh, so we're, where we're at, we're, we're at an undisclosed location. We're uh, Again, if you do know where we're at, please don't share any information. We want to keep unbiased as possible uh, we don't like to release those locations unless it's a public place uh, this is a historical location Jimmy there are some claims uh, from current individuals in the building and previous I reached out to those a little bit this week uh, but to answer your question why we're here uh, we're helping uh, some friends of ours that kind of doing a little website a little online um, I guess TV series called Bump in the Night kind of like your uh, Munster Mash deal they're you know skits and videos and things uh, they'll be with us tomorrow night they're gonna be actually recording and interviewing us so definitely tune in tomorrow night uh, 
Look up Bump in the Night on Facebook. Really cool website. Uh, I put a link on our page. Okay. It, there's definitely a link on our page. And we're, we're here tonight, Jimmy, just to get a baseline. Uh, that way we don't have the camera people following us. We want to make sure that's good. Yeah, well, I kind of noticed the same thing, Jennifer, so I'm, I'm waiting for someone to respond to that. Um, I agree. It's getting a little darker in there, and we've been sitting here long enough. Um, we'll see if she catches on here a little bit. Uh, but you're absolutely right, J Jennifer. I've, I've noticed that since she came back in the room. Uh, those things tend to come around her a lot and that kind of comes with her gifts but Jimmy we're here tonight just to get a baseline and de do some debunking uh, but tomorrow night we'll be doing some interviews and doing some of our investigation technique I would say probably in the next few minutes we'll probably go offline and just let everything record then we're going to set up our experiment uh, definitely tune into our experiment folks um, hey, Miss Collins. Thank you for tuning in. Um, we we're gonna we're gonna do that experiment. It's pretty Can intense. Walk over there and make sure that it's gonna pick up. Um, so what Mike's doing is having Leah double check. Hey, Jennifer, if you're still online now, I would bet you money it's gone now. Your camera is. Hey, Chris, did you see that before or after Leah stood up? Okay, it doesn't cast a figure on you, but I can see it. You're absolutely right, Jimmy. There is a lot of activity. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, right, right right, now, that's that's Leah. She is uh, being used as a tech subject for Mike's equipment to make sure it picks up something that's there. And we just want to make sure the equipment works. Um, and it's one of the thing with investigators, they get all these new fancy equipment and they're not sure what the pros and cons are, but you gotta do, there she is, she's trying to do her YMCA deal. I kind of see it right now. Um, That's a four. Right, I'm going to sit here in front of this for a second. Absolutely. Okay. Hey, Mike. Yes, sir. I'm gonna, hey, Jennifer, I'm going to, if you can see or hear me, I'm going to have Mike walk in that direction where you're seeing what I think I see. And can you tell me if Mike's in about the right spot? In the room? Yep. About where the power comes, right? What am I going over here? How right about there? You ain't the only one, Jimmy. Um, come to your left, sir. All right. I agree, Jimmy. It's um. The atmosphere changed a little bit. Leah's down in the hallway. But you're right, Jennifer, it, it is, there it is. Um, kind of one of the reasons why I got my back against the wall. Yep, I'm with you, Jennifer, it's there. Uh, Leah's trying to pick up where you're at, but it's not doing too good of a job so far. Yep. Uh, so Jennifer is saying about where you're at right there, there was a dark shadow. Um, so when Leah was sitting down, she won't know this, but when Leah was sitting down, the dark shadow was behind her. Um, so Mike's going to shoot that corner right now with a video camera, by the way. Not a, 
fully automatic rifle. And what you've noticed right now, add just instinct and training. Okay, we'll do that, Chris. We'll try that. Kind of funny you mentioned that name. We won't let Leah say that, but that was pretty good. Hi. Mike. Yes. Downstairs. secure Woo. now since I'm in this room by myself talking about creepy mm. so what I, I can see Leah Leah can see my they're doing some debunking on some activity on there but yes Jimmy you are right I'm sitting here looking at it I see it as well so there's Jennifer you're right I'm seeing the shadows I can't really prove or disprove if that's not the sun going down because there is a window behind me yep did anybody else just see that So what they're down there, Mike's got his night vision camera and they got the equipment set up. Um, um, I'm in eye shot and ear shot of both of them right now. Um, one thing else you gotta do with it as an investigator, you have to squinch that, that, that feeling of nervousness because you're in an unknown area. Yes, okay, thank you, Jimmy. I'm seeing it too, okay. Yep. So what I, what I just saw for everybody watching about two minutes ago, if you go back and watch this, um, I, I, I saw a shadow uh, where Mike was at. It looked like it came from the ceiling straight down to the second floor, and it's moving down there now. Now, there's no windows from the outside downstairs, and I'm not moving around that much. And that's just part of it. You just gotta sit here and watch your eyes adjust. Now, we still have an audio recorder, so I'm gonna ask a couple questions. Is there anyone here named Kate? going to be quiet for a couple minutes. Y'all listen for me real close. You probably got a bigger screen than I do right now. I'm just looking with my eyeballs. You and I just saw what we're about to go find out. So cool. what we're going to do, um, Mike's going to take the camera off. Uh, Jimmy, what you and I saw, and Jennifer, what you saw. I'm going to turn the camera around here now so I can actually read. There we go. So. You coming. We're going to head on down. We're going to leave the audio. Recording. Yeah, the recorder's going to stay. I want to give everybody a shot here real quick of the camera that I have set up. So what's going to happen is... 
and that's pointing all the way down the hall. You can see the. I'm sorry. There's the cord. You can see the banister and everything there. And I've got two different views. This is the uh, thermal view, and then I've got the black and white night vision view over there. So, Jimmy, Jennifer, and everybody, uh, what Jimmy confirmed, and I, we just saw something. So we're gonna go check it out. Mike and Leah don't know what we saw. Of course, you always can say. Actually, since yeah. you can tell me while we're standing here, okay. so Leah doesn't hear. We can. We did. We did shut all the doors. We did. So. So and let me go ahead and tell me what you are picking up on. All right. And I'll so, tell you what has happened to us since we went down there. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to whisper. Um, Jimmy or anybody watching, can you give me a thumbs up or a heart that if, if you're like, if, what, if you can still hear me, because I got to whisper, because I don't want you to hear. Um, when you and Leah were over there, I was sitting still. I thought I saw something go from under your feet to the bottom floor of Black Shadow. Uh -huh. Same time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jimmy. And everyone else, uh, please share. But we were both we both saw it. Okay. And I saw the, the blocking of light going out now. Um, we also know that that door was closed earlier, but now it's open. So we're going to go down and debunk. And what did you and Leah experience? Yeah, let me sure. show as we're walking. So Leah picked up on it. Do what? Uh, talking about stuff that you can't hear. So the first thing that Leah noticed, whenever we first got here, this room right here, there's a studio on the other side of this room. When we first got here, Ed was standing here and I got on the other side of the door just being goofy and I looked through this blind, because this is how tall I am. If I stand up to this, this is where I would be seeing. Lifted the blind up, sat it back down. Left the door looking like this. Whenever Leah came over here, these blinds all right here were pulled up as though somebody right here had been looking through them. Now I've reset them, so if anything happens, if they're different again, when we come back, something's going on. This door right over here, we went in earlier and shut it. I heard it too. Something's downstairs. So this door was open too. We're going to head downstairs. I don't know if we shut that door or not. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Jimmy and everybody else who watched it, this is about the spot that I saw it. That's all I'm going to say. Whatever. Saw a black shadow go across the wide of the banisters. So what we saw was yep. my, Mike was up there. Jimmy, right after. Right before I said I saw it, I saw black from the banister down here, and I heard a thump. And Jimmy and I, Jimmy said he saw it too. That I was standing right there when that happened to me. The thing was pulled out of my pocket and hit my foot. Yeah. 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 Stairs up there. There's one Mike's got an experiment too. There is a theory that spirits or things can mess with lights. Um, and if that light turns off when we're down here? So we're going to go into a creepy part of the building. Uh, As if this whole building wasn't creepy. <laughs> What's up? Now that's the staircase where I heard this. Okay, so something I forgot to mention, whenever I was coming back 
to the room earlier after I'd set up that camera, I heard what sounded like somebody go <sighs> really loud when I walked past this up there. Right there is the doorway for it. Let me get it in the camera shot. Right there. When we came here for the walkthrough, Leah also heard the same thing. Jimmy's... heard the side and then when I got right here on this part of the staircase there's whispering. Jimmy the said he just heard whispering. stop. A whisper. Did you hear it too? Okay. From that area we're about to go to. Mm -hmm. I'll go in front. <clears throat> Alright. So we're going to go to a part where we have had some activity. Uh, yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> Startled me there for a second. All right, here we go. Jim, where did you hear it? He's telling us we need to go back. Bad vibes right now. Yeah, that's what we do, Jimmy. <laughs> so I agree with you. Um, that was me. So if you notice on the video, for because I'm a moron, I ironically reached where I would keep my pistol and I'll have it with me. Um, this is a creepy area. We have had activity here. So everybody keep your ears. So we're going to wait a little bit on this area. So you're right, and I, I, I heard a, a growl. He said back before the stairs, right before it. Yeah, and that kind of went. Jimmy, I'm walking back over here. Right here? Go ahead, Ed. What you were saying? No, so when we were in that area, uh, before we and Mike went upstairs, I heard something up there. Um, it was the, okay, hopefully there is a local train. Yeah, <laughs> there is. That's one of the fierce EVPs I've ever heard in my life. I know, right? No, there is, there, is, e there is a train in the area. <laughs> okay. I'm sure I can stop the ghost train. Uh, All right, they got me. Uh, but there is claims here. We well, don't know exactly what they are. Mike does. That was told by someone who um, has access to this building, but they do not, is not a client. So that's confirmation there. And that's why we don't share information. We document it, that's why it's written. But in that area we were just back, it, it, it is, uh, we will go back there here shortly. Uh, we're gonna, So we're going to, unfortunately. Is that water running? It sounds like it. That I've been hearing that all night. That's the air. It's that air unit that's behind that door. Let's check. Okay, now we're going to check the water. I'm pretty sure that that's where the air unit was at that we were listening to earlier. There's so many closets in this place. Hold on, I'm going to check this door. It's right here. Listen. Okay, good. I heard. Well, it made that noise when he stepped up. Ed, can step out of there for a second. Now step back up. No. Walk in. Okay, it didn't do it. There was a tap or some sort of noise mm -hmm. in this one whenever you stepped up into that one. That's Ed turning on the water. He's checking the 
tightness of the water to see if it could come on by itself. Jimmy, if you heard the noise that we did, yes, we heard that. Are you okay? I saw you move forward just then. Yeah, it's just, it's like outside the house. I can't get my bearings. Yeah. That was Ed whispering, if anybody picked that up. Yeah, that was good for me. Turn on the flashlight off for just a second, guys. Okay, let's give some notice, please, so I can get out of the doorway. <laughs> okay, we can go dark. Funny thing is, I'm hearing it too, and I'm hearing it from over there. Hey, Darren, thanks for joining us. Leah, stop! You're not in. You don't need to be in front. Okay. What's up? Darren, we're at a uh, historical location not too far from where we're headquartered. Uh, we're not allowed to give out the location per the client's instructions. So just uh, all I can share with you, this is a uh, historical location for this area. It's actually a national historical location. Darren, we're already having a lot of experiences, and we've barely been investigating two hours. There's a, a feminine I'm gonna sit down here for a second. Equilibrium. See, now that I'm out here, I hear this air work and everything behind me, and I'm wondering if that's what I heard. It's a possibility. Darren's got a question. Ed, I'm going to let you take this one. It says, what's been your best piece of device you have been using? What's the best piece of equipment? Audio recorder. It's plain and simple. Um, that's where we've got our best, absolutely best evidence. Uh, we've got three or four, uh, or three really good, what we've got class A, stuff that you don't have to run through a software program. Just you listen to it. And in all those situations, we know for a fact where every investigator was a path. That's one of the good things about a smaller group. 
and in two of those, we know the reporter, just like we got upstairs, was left alone. Yeah, we do have our audio recorder still sitting up there where we were originally, where we started out at. But to your, uh, is it Darren? Yeah, Darren. Yeah, Darren. Uh, as far as that's the best equipment, I think, I think the biggest um, would be your instinct. It's, um, and it, it just takes time and to, because what can happen is you can go into a location like this and shadows are start moving and you're just chasing shadows and sounds all night. Mm -hmm. we're, what we are doing now is we did, we've done it instinctively, we didn't plan to do this, is we've stopped. We chased it for a few minutes, we realized that we're gonna make it stop, quit messing around, we're in control. We're gonna go into this other location here shortly. Uh, that is, for me personally, I don't get creeped out a lot. I don't have any sensitivities. I'm completely blind unless something hits me in the face with it. And I hope that doesn't happen. Jimmy, we do not have a spirit box. Um, we've used them in the past, but it's it's the electronic equivalent of a Ouija board if used improperly. So we have a tendency to try to steer clear of that. What just happened? I saw a black shadow on the wall. She got touched at the same time. This is the first time, the only time I've seen that. Right here? About the time that I turned the light on, now I'm not going to say that it wasn't dust because I do not buy into orbs at all, but when I turned the camera on, I saw something light move go up the steps. Darren, we have an SLS camera actually set up upstairs right now. It is sitting right there on the banister. You can't tell because it's black, but it's sitting right there and it's aimed at that doorway right over there because before you got on, we actually had some uh, viewers said they were seeing a white mist down there. So we set the camera up to see if we can pick up anything. This is where you heard stop, Jimmy, these particular steps? You hear that? It's on the other side. Of that door? That's the other part of the building, isn't it? Yep, that's where I just texted you about. Well, I can't get text when I got the camera running. Well, the note I showed you. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so what happened was a few uh, earlier, um, when Leah was down the hallway and Mike was sitting up with the smear, I, I text, I wrote a note on my notepad on my phone and showed it to Mike about something I just that I thought I heard earlier since I'm standing here, Leah's here in too. Uh, so. Okay, so every time I look away or I turn my back on you, something happens. So you're going to have my full attention for a while. So everybody, please tune in and share because um, this next part, part I can speak. As you watch Leah do her Lamas. <laughs> but it is, it, it is a strain. You getting challenged? Yeah. Okay. So I'll go in front. The reason we do that is my canals rotate out so we don't worry. Same idea about like uh, birds, they switch the, the lead out. My canal do that, we'll keep Leah in the middle. Uh, that kind of that way, if there's activity in front or back, she's protected. Right. Uh, all right, we ready? Sure. We're ready as ever, baby. All right. So, and here, here's just a warning. What you see is what happens. Um, I've known Mike and Leah for 20 plus years. I've investigated with other groups. Sometimes they kind of embellish in some activity. What happens, happens. And even when we do locate an EVP or something on video, or we hear something, uh, like Leah's being, her hair's being messed with now, uh, which has happened all night long, uh, we just saw a shadow move of, 
about 10 minutes ago when Leah got touched. But we'll take time and we'll come back and we'll, we'll spend hours trying to debunk that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just like whenever you notice, whenever Ed took a step into that bathroom and we heard that noise, Jimmy, I know you heard it in that other bathroom. Uh, I immediately had Ed do the same thing again to see if we could recreate that noise. A uh, couple of quick questions here. Um, Rowena, hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, Jimmy, Mike, we are based out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yeah, check us out, paranormalhealthministries.com. Uh, shameless plug. But in all honesty, uh, we love working with other groups. Uh, we're there, with Mike and Lee are some spiritual warriors. Uh, that's what they do. Darren asks, what's the difference between a demon spirit and a malevolent spirit? It's the same thing, it's the same thing Darren. Tomato, tomato. Yeah, yeah. there's uh, no difference. It's just a different word for it. Ooh, that's cold. I got it too. That's cold. That's ran through me. There's no air vents here, by the no. way. No. All right, so what we're going to do, uh, let me just warn everybody, please. Number one fact is you want to go home safe, just like any other, you do anything like you want to go home safe. We make preparations before, during, if we have to, especially after. Uh, we keep in contact with them a couple of days, a couple of hours. We always check in. Uh, because something, although we prepare above and beyond probably most teams out there, you got to be careful. Um, I've got children, grandchildren, and so on. Um, I want to protect them. And my family has families too. And, we want to make sure they're safe. Uh, we, we will push ourselves, uh, and we do this just because we want to debunk everything that's possible. And if there is something uncomfortable or unsafe, it is, uh, we can remove it, but it's not going to do no good unless the client wants us to remove it. It's up to them. They have the authority over the property. Right, because it's like I've used this adage so many times. Uh, we can come in with a vacuum cleaner and clean your house, but if you're just going to keep, you know, throwing pizza crusts and dumping dirt all over the place when we're not there, it's not really any help. Okay. Okay. What's up? I'm starting to get. I'm getting a headache. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, it, it's going to smack you in the face. Yep. Yeah. So get ready for it. Okay. Lord protect us. Anything? Not a word. I thought I heard a whimper also behind me. I'm going to turn around. I think we're going in the right spot because I think it's trying to draw our attention behind us instead of right. Darren, we've done the flashlight test before. Um, we've had some varying degrees of success with it. Give me just a minute and I'll go further in depth on that question, sir. If I don't get it in the next few minutes, remind me again. But we have used that question, we have used that test before. I didn't. I didn't hear anything that like time. Something slammed or moved around behind us. I didn't hear anything. Whoa. Ed, what is it? Keys are moving. I heard stomping. The key. Now Ed jumped back. That was me. That was me. Okay. The keys are moving in the when door. I the keys are moving. Because I saw the door move back a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Well, that's true. That's pretty clear. Okay. That's Adam. All right. I want to go that way. I 
don't want to go that way, but I want to go that way. This way? Yeah. All right. If you hear heavy blowing, that's me. I'm, I'm pushing things off of me. And that's just how I do it. That's my, my defense mechanism. Defense Ed, and it's my turn to ask this question. Did we leave these doors open? That one, yes. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Let me go. Uh, okay, rotating. Okay, yeah, this is a spot I felt very uncomfortable. Still do. But, oh, okay. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this flashlight off for a second. Have y'all heard anything audible since y'all stepped in there? You heard what? Yes, but now I heard it Okay. Jimmy, I'm choosing not to share what you said. I just wanted to see if everybody heard the same thing. But as you can tell, everyone has heard something different. But that happens. Sometimes it's based on interpretation. We've had uh, exactly. I was going to say if it's meant for one person and not the other. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. I hear all kind of popping and cracking right there. Let me swap with me. Is that a shower? Yeah. Oh, wow. Just give everybody a shot of what this room looks like. That was me. That exit light puts off a very ominous glow. Are we going down that way? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Gotta have the light so I can see where I'm going. Right. Pause to wait for Leah. I will say that's a little interesting. What is? What I'm hearing up here. Thought you hit the banister for a second. It was a doo, doo, doo. I heard that. I, th I thought he'd hit that. Can you do that again? Can you make some kind of audible noise so we can hear you?
use the red light. It was, it's been on. That was the only light that was on when we came in. So I've got a little device here in my pocket that I'm going to turn on. I'm going through this one. Wow. So for those of you that didn't realize, I just pulled an EMF detector out of my pocket. And Good it is there. off the mark here. No There's nothing there. Okay, now we got to debunk that. This there. is... Is it that? Let me. The emergency? I mean, it can't even sit still. Here. What? And, and Are it, you kidding? And hold that. So it turns off at that. Whoa. What Mike's doing, he's checking. Oh, great. Right in there. Oh, so it's Leah. I'll walk past it, see what happens. Make it beep again. All right, for those of you that don't know what this is, it's an electromagnetic field detector. It also picks up temperature variations down on the bottom right-hand corner. You'll note where I'm standing is a hallway where there should be nothing electrical right here. Well, everything you put it near every, every, every time I put it next to something electrical, it stops. Leah, move. I'm coming around because I mean, I want to see. Is it the wall? If it, 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 uh, it could be the power for the oven. Could be the what? If there's a restaurant, oh. 220 can run it. But it'd have to be, your, you're right, Jimmy. There's a base? I mean, it's a flat line. What's Jimmy saying? Uh, check your wires, which that's what Michael's doing. He's debunking now. We'll step back to the center of the hallway again, which is where. No, it's not. No. This go, is where it was going off. Go low and then go high. If I get anybody in the face, I'm sorry. So I agree with you, Jimmy. Let me turn the light on on it. There we go. Can you? Can you make it go off? Can you stop it? See. No. Huh? Every time you get close to this device, it's what's causing it to go off, and it's what's pick, causing us to pick you up. Can you step away from it, please, for just a moment? Is it this? Nope. It's a, I would call that a vortex, or unexplained at least. And see, now I'm back in the same spot, and it's not going to do it. It will in just a second, I'm sure. But I'm going to do this. Get close to this. Hold on. What am I, the thumb? Yeah. yeah. It's not the thumb. Well. Chill up. Could be. I think it is. Good okay. debunking. Woo! <laughs> Golly, look at that. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's, off, a, it's the off the chart. Okay. Which would make sense because when I pulled the EMF detector out of my pocket, I had my phone and my EMF detector in the same hand. Okay. Well, I'm... Okay, now that one... Yeah. Keep I'm... a distance behind me. Yeah, okay. To answer your question, Mr. Hitchcock, yes. Uh, guy downstairs suggested that we would.
lesson to everybody watching, you saw how a cell phone can manipulate a EMF detector. So if you're in an investigation in your own, you should probably, if you're running a line or if you've got a cell phone, you should keep it a considerable distance from the EMF detector because it can manipulate it. Because we have picked up a, a single thing since how it got away from you. Mm-hmm. All right. Nice chain. Yep. I definitely agree with you there, Miss Hitchcock. Look up and just walk right into the main thing. Can we keep Real running? Quick? Can we keep running this? Yeah. Well, hold on there, Booker. Let's see. All right. Let's do that. That's a pretty good shot. Hey, there are little thing briars on the side there, so. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, you're right, Jimmy. Ooh. Telling you. Can you make those keys move while I'm standing here? <laughs> so I'm gonna everybody watch that window right there. If you're on live. Michael the flashlight. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you, Jimmy. So what we're now we're just sitting here watching and listening. Um, I'm kind of feel like it's starting to anticipate intensify a little bit. Give a little lot there. Sorry. Just a quick education on the EMF detector for those of you that don't know why we use it. Is the theory is that spirits, demons, whatever, will use uh, electromagnetic energy to try to manifest, and anything that they do, because our own bodies produce um, EMF fields. This is made so that it doesn't pick up the EMF field of the body. But if you shake it really hard, it'll do that. Um, it shouldn't pick up anything, shouldn't be picking me up, which it's not. But any type of large enough spike where there's nothing electro electric uh, near it could be a potential uh, manifestation. That's why you saw whenever this thing went off a second ago, we did everything we could to try to debunk it, and we were able to determine that it was the phone. All right. Anybody getting anything? You see Mike down there, he's double checking the electrical. And something with electrical, especially if you're sensitive, and you, you can kind of get a thing called the fear cage mentality. Right. Uh, and Mike, you want to explain to people what that is? So fear cage basically is if you're in a, in a 
location where there is a lot of natural electromagnetic, and when I say natural, I mean as in, uh, well, it's not even really natural. Electrical wiring is where I'm trying to go with this. Um, if you have got a lot of unshielded wiring in your home or uh, your fuse box isn't grounded correctly, it will cause a huge electromagnetic field. Now, the human body is not made to, in, to take on that much electromagnetic. Uh, it causes skin irritations, it causes hallucinations, um, and if you're in a situation where, I'll give an example, a case we had where the place where a bed, the woman's bed was located, she was sitting on these different things entering into her room. Where her bed, or the head of her bed was, there was a fan blowing on her face. The fan was putting off about 300 milligauss. The other side of the bed was a fish fountain with the water pump and a light in it that was aquarium. also putting off. What did I say? Fish fountain. Fish fountain. I'm sorry. <laughs> An aquarium. A fish tank that was putting off a high level of electromagnetic. There was just so many things around the head of her bed that was causing EMF. We told her to move those items and when she did, her activity went away. We've had cases where a client's bed was over the fuse box in the basement and she was having nightmares and, and manifestations at night when they moved the bed to the other side of the room the manifestation stopped. Mm. It's kind of 79 degrees in here. Mm -hmm. I'm sweating buckets though. I'm comfortable for the first time. Mm -mm. Not where I'm standing, I'm not. Oh yeah, sorry. Well, I've got the the audio on it turned down, so it won't make an audible noise. Did anybody else just see that red light go out? Here it goes again. What red light going behind you? Jimmy says try to move your wrist up and down again. Huh? Mike. Move my wrist up and down. Yeah, with the thing in your arm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of felt like that was probably, it, it might have been. He thought he saw that orb. No, it was probably this when I came by. Like a reflection maybe in the window. Yeah. Good eyes, Jimmy, I tell you. Okay, I should be far enough away from you that this shouldn't be going off. Yeah, that's way too high from where you're at. Um. Do you have your anointing oil on you? Do what? Do you have your oil on you? No, I don't. Okay. Okay. So we're about to, we appreciate everybody. Walk. We're going to walk back upstairs. I'll hand the phone off to Mike. We're going to walk upstairs and wrap up. And then we're going to throw the flashlight before. Something have to go in front of it. Yeah. Step up. Do you want me to close this or just leave it propped open for now? I'd close it. You need to, need to go back in there tomorrow and that will be more fair. All right, we we'll get a shot shot of this hallway. Jimmy, there's your stairs. I'm going to sit on those stairs. Get up now, they've walked off and left me.
everybody watching, watching. Tune in tomorrow. We're definitely going to be. Um, it's going to be a little interesting tomorrow. It's going to be ten thirty six. You think we're done for the night? You don't think we'll pop back on anymore? Uh, yeah, I think we're going to wrap up tonight. There's some other things I want to debunk in the building. Um, we might set up here quickly to do the experiment. Huh? Huh? I said ah. You think? Prime. <laughs> That's for sure. Yep. I think you need to get your anointing oil. So just keep an eye on our Facebook here. The next five, ten minutes, we'll update what we're going to do. Okay. What's up? So black shirt is right behind me. I'm just not there. Or the debunk or figure out this spider web thing because it's driving me nuts. It's not strong. Like I'm gonna say you're the, you, but you're the only one that has had anything happen like that. I haven't felt anything. It's not spider web. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna wrap up here, do a little bit more debunking. Yeah, we need to let the phone rest anyway. It's actually starting to get hot in my hand. Absolutely. So <laughs> some interesting activity. And I'm sure since we came in here and kind of kicked the hornet's nest, it'll be really interesting tomorrow. Right. Uh, so definitely tune in. Check out the links on our page. Guys, hit that notification bell because if something if something you know noteworthy happens tonight, we may pop back on. So if you got that notification bell clicked, you'll know as soon as we get on, and you can jump back in here with yeah. us. Guys, it's kind of like a 30-minute buffer, and if we do decide to get it back on, right, it would be during that time frame. If not. We will see you tomorrow night. Definitely. Guys, thanks. Everybody, thanks. Jimmy, thanks. You've been a huge help tonight. And we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. See y'all later, if not tomorrow night. Holding on one more second. Did you see that? I did. Okay. All right, guys. See you later.